Number five on the all time Yankee list. A 318 career average for Jeter in a Yankee uniform. To the right side of base hit. They bring Brocious around third. Throw by Nixon to the plate is dropped. Safe. Tie game and down to second is Jeter. The parents of Derek Jeter watching the base hit into right a strong throw by Nixon and Baratek dropped it boy are you ever right that was a terrific play on the part of Trot Nixon because Jeter doesn't hit it that well fielded well on the short hop and a good throw to Baratek that was not an in-between hop that ball was right there Roach just crashing into Baratek I think uh, what happened Jason looked like he took a peek at the last minute as Brocious came into him and by taking a peek at the runner he dropped the ball right you, there you could see Veritek's head start to move to the left to pick up Brocious coming down that third baseline just a split second before the ball got there through eight innings now in game one a 3 3 score and with the rain continuing to fall although it's letting up at this moment Mariano Rivera takes over and you heard Dave Jow say that Rivera is tough to run on because his pitches are up high in the zone. Got him over the inside corner, two down. Bases empty, two down, and Nixon grounds back to Rivera. Getting over a one, two, three inning for Mariano Rivera. Go ahead, run it first with nobody out. Offerman starts and stops and a ground ball to third. Down to second, out. They call him out, and we are going to get an argument. Jimmy Williams comes firing out of the dugout. They say it was on the transfer, and Offerman is forced at second to put out 5-4. And with Valentin running, the Yankees just missed a chance for a double play. No way, in my view, was he in the act of throwing. That ball popped out of his glove. He never even touched the ball. There was no transfer from the glove to the hand. We'll check it out. Ball came out of his glove. He never went in to, he was never in the act of throwing. That's a very poor call by second base umpire Rick Reed. Knobloch never had control of this ball. It hits the glove and comes out immediately. No control in the glove, no control in the hand. Yankees with a huge break right there. So instead of two on with nobody out, it's the go-ahead run at first, and Daubach gets it back to Rivera. It's Jeter in the middle this time in a double play. 1-6-3. And what a turnaround. What a turnaround in a matter of minutes. Yankees catch a break. Still 3-3, bottom of the 10. A big, burly right-hander. The 0-1. Swung on a drill deep to center field. Going back, Lewis. Still back. Looking up. See ya! A home run. Bernie Williams. And the Yankees win the game 4-3. to three. A big-time home run for Bernie Williams. Just to the left of dead center field. And the Yankees take a one-game-to-nothing lead in the best of seven. And the Yankees are mobbing Bernie Williams around home plate. What a dramatic finish here in the bottom of the 10th inning. And the Yankees win 4-3 over their arch-rival Red Sox. And these Red Sox who are 0-8 for 8 with runners in scoring position tonight. 0-12 for 12 in this series. Ask for a hit from Garcia Parra. Down the left field line. That ball is gone. No more Garcia Parra. A two-run home run. And the Red Sox take a 2-1 to one fifth inning lead. When you drop down on a right-handed hitter and you're a right-handed pitcher, the intention is to get the right-hander to bail and you, to get the pitch outside. And if you don't get it outside and he doesn't bail, bad things can happen. Middle of the plate. That was a spinner, not a slider. 
Clint Cohn with the drop down and dropped down to low three quarters, almost sidearm on that breaking ball and made it much, much flatter. That man put Lede is the runner in second, and there's a shot into the corner. He won't get around the walk. Scoring easily is Lede. It's a 2 2 game here in the seventh. The Yankees once again patient as Cobras and striking like one too. That's the last pitch of the night. 120 pitches this evening for Ramon Martinez gave the Red Sox all he had. But after this here in the seventh it's a 2 2 game. One of the key things for a hitter is to stay back and nobody alters a hitter staying back like Pedro Martinez 23 and 4 an earned run average of 2.07 313 strikeouts and only 213 in the third innings runner will go Williams strikes out. Another four in a row it's on a 2 2 count. Goodbye. Third strikeout in a row for Pedro Martinez. Two up, two down in the second. Four strikeouts in a row. Girardi is gone, and that's five strikeouts for Martinez. Discussion between Jeter and Rick Reed, the home plate umpire. That's strikeout number six. Strikeout number seven. Good fastball still there. It is Dash Chili Davis. 92 miles per hour blown right by him. And that's eight strikeouts for Pedro. Another strikeout number nine. Yes. But not Red Sox fans. Jeter says goodbye as that's 10 strikeouts, double digit strikeouts for Pedro Martinez. Another strikeout. Tino Martinez is gone, and that's 12. Wealthy enough and. Can I say foolish enough to spend $35,000 for a hat? <laughs> the pop up left side for Valentin off the bat of the day, and it's time to stretch here at Fenway. 105 pitches on the night for Pedro Martinez. The seventh error in this postseason for Boston doesn't matter. Offerman makes the play. The day is gone, and this game is over. It's now two games to one. The Yankees out in front as the Red Sox take care of New York 13 to one here in game three. Hard hit down the right field line, curling into the corner. It's gone. Off the foul pole, and Daryl Strawberry goes deep to put the Yankees out in front here in the second. That'll be an 0 1 to the day. Swung on and hit the deep center field. A way back. It is high. It is far. It is gone. A grand slam for Ricky Lede. What a way to get back in the lineup. He hit a high, deep drive in the center field bleachers. A grand slam. And Ricky has now given the Yankees a 9-2 lead. Now Mariano Rivera, who won game one, saved game two, works in game four. There's the tying run at first with one out. Not going. And Valentin a check swing ground ball to not block. They say he tagged the runner out at first, and they're calling it an inning-ending double play. Jimmy Williams comes sprinting out to talk to the second base umpire Tim Toshida and I have to say from up here it looked like Knobloch missed Offerman. He missed it. Was he called out because he was out of the baseline to try to avoid the tag. He did not look like he was out of the baseline to me. Obviously he tries to avoid the tag. It's clear that Knobloch didn't tag him. 
but I think he was called out for going out of the baseline and he did not look like he was out of the baseline from this viewpoint. We get coverage at normal time. Here's a ground ball to third. Backhanded stab by Brocious. Out at first. And another argument. Now Brocious makes a nice play to his backhand side here. Falls to the ground. Takes a little while to right himself. Garcia Parra streaking down that first baseline. Hey, on first look with the naked eye, it looked like he beat the play. He was safe. A closer look right there. That one, it could have gone either way. And Jimmy Williams has just been ejected after he fired his hat into the air. And the bullpen of the Yankees has emptied, so nobody's available to warm up. Little broken bat pop up to Knobloch. That's one on, two out. Hunters on at second and third with two out, the one, two. Game over. And the Yankees take a three games to one advantage in this ALCS. And so those who are left here at Fenway Park watching as the Yankees come part of the way out of their dugout, about halfway out onto the playing field as they wait for O'Neill, Curtis, and Williams to join the situation and the celebration. Jeter pounds one into center field, well hit. Back is Lewis at the wall, off the top of the camera stand and gone for a two-run home run. Hit a long way into the wind by Jarek Jeter, and just like that, the Yankees are out in front by two. Off the top of the camera stand in center, and the Red Sox fall behind in game five. The one-two. Swung on and hit in the air to left field. Spencer toward the line is there. He makes the catch. Ball game over. American League Championship Series over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. And they celebrate on the mound. The bullpen races in a very happy crew and don't think they didn't want to win it in Boston. They certainly did. Wink at it. The Misses the steal sign. I would suspect he's running here. He is going, and Ortiz pounds a home run into right. The Red Sox lead 2 0. Upper tank. Off the bat of Ortiz, who gets his first ever hit against Messina and takes him out of the park. His seventh home run against Yankee pitching this season. Here's one into right that's got a chance at the wall off the bat of Ramirez a leap and it's gone a two homer inning for Boston and they've doubled their lead it's four nothing. A three homer game for the Red Sox against Messina. Who gave up 21 during the regular season. Well, this is more like what people expected out of the Red Sox coming into the playoffs. This was a team that set major league records for extra base hits, total bases, and slugging percentage. And the 0-1. Swung on, there it goes to right. That ball is high. Net is far. It is gone. Oh, it's a two-run blast by Nick Johnson deep in the lower deck. St. Nick. And on the two run Johnson Homer, the Yankees take a 2 1 lead. Well, he hasn't had many hits since September the 23rd, but the two he has had have counted in a big way. When the Yankees exploded for six runs in the clincher on Sunday in Minneapolis, it was a big two run double by Nick Johnson. An even bigger two run home run here in the bottom of the second has given the Yankees the lead for the first time in the ALCS. It's two to one on the home run by Nick Johnson. A 1 0 pitch is hammered into left center field. Back is Kepler. This ball is up against. Two runs are going to score, and the Yankees tack on two big ones. It's 6 2. 
Cubs and the Marlins tomorrow afternoon, and that is hit deep and gone. This game is tied out onto Lansdowne Street, over the monster, over the new seats, and Derek Jeter has tied this game at two. We talked about that curveball and how Martinez was getting under it. He was hurt in game the first game he pitched in the playoffs and in the second game and when he wasn't hurt he was lucky to get away with that pitch. There are some times where catchers have to can a certain pitch because of the prior history prior recent history and third nobody out and this is over the head actually must have hit the bat of Kareem Garcia and a foul ball and Garcia immediately pops up and screams at Martinez. Yeah, that was perilously close to his head. Martinez hitting Soriano and Derek Jeter. The last time the Yankees and Red Sox played the two to one game won by the Yankees. Back in August. Now Joe Torrey. Well, they warned both benches. I guess it must have nicked the helmet. I thought it hit his bat too. I thought it hit him in the back. Really? It was behind his head. Well, Martinez now pointing that's the wrong thing to do that's inciting right there trying to get himself under control now Ramirez that ball's not even close you talk about looking for a reason absolutely Oh my goodness. Don Zimmer and Pedro Martinez. Oh. That's awful. Don Zimmer, a 72 year old man, went into Pedro Martinez's face, and Pedro Martinez threw him down. That's terrible. Awful. That was absolutely awful. For the start of the bottom of the ninth inning, we've had another ugly incident as a fan out above that Yankee bullpen has jumped down in there. Police responded immediately, as did the bullpen staff for the Yankees. And it looks like what could have been an awful situation has been handled for the most part. But You've never seen Jorge Posada run faster than he just ran out to that bullpen. I mean, he was sprinting out there. Mariano Rivera takes over. You talk about a home field advantage. Rivera, when he comes out of the bullpen at Yankee Stadium, they play Enter Sandman by Metallica to get everybody, including Rivera, pumped up. Here, the crowd just got finished singing Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. A jam shot. Tough play, good play by Rivera, one out. The 0 1 pitch. Walker the opposite way to left. How far will it carry? Not far enough as the left fielder Matsui pulls it in to the shortstop Jeter. Wide throw and out on the tag by Johnson is Garcia Parra. That is toward right, but cut off by Nick Johnson. A flip for the out, one away. This important game three. Hammered and caught. Diving catch by Nick Johnson. In foul territory, guarding the line. Into center field for Bernie Williams. And the New York Yankees have taken game three. Two two delivery hammer deep right field back is Delucci the Boston Red Sox take the lead Joe Torre has been waiting for another opportunity to use Mariano Rivera for Two innings and he gets his chance here in the eighth inning of game five. To the right side, run scores. The Yankees get an out here in the eighth inning, an RBI ground out.
Two out. Game five, series tied. Cheater to his left. Flips, and we go to the ninth inning. To the second baseman, Soriano. One away in the bottom of the ninth. Jam shot, Boone charging. Two out. Baratek pops it into shallow center. Tough play, might drop. Jeter with a sensational catch to end game five. The Yankees win it, a final of four to two. That's hammered into left field. Back at the wall to tie this thing. Home run, Veritek into the upper deck. And it's 1-1 here in the third inning. Already his fourth home run of this postseason. And it was only a question as to how far it would fly, and it went a long way. Mercy did it ever. Second home run of the series against Pettit. He doubled and homered in game two. Hanging curveball. My gosh. Four positive. And that's a fly ball into left center field carrying. Williams back on the run. It's over his head and off the wall. And nearly out of the park, Garcia Parra will turn, go to third. The throw is terrible. Into the seats and to the plate goes Garcia Parra. It's a one-run game. The wind played with that ball off the bat and may have played with it on the relay throw in toward third. Nixon hammers one to deep right. If it's fair, it's gone. This ball is in the upper deck, a two-run home run. It's 9-6 Boston here in the ninth. So much for Trot Nixon's tough night. He delivers at a crucial time here in the ninth inning to give the Red Sox a three-run cushion. Go ahead run in the seventh. And now after Nelson gives up a double to Miller, Trot Nixon takes the lefty White into the upper deck. And it's 9-6 in the ninth. The 1-1 pitch from Williamson, trying to nail it down. Into right center field. We'll see you tomorrow night. Game 7 of the ALCS. We know you'll join us as Pedro Martinez takes on Roger Clemens. It all falls to this at Game 7 here in the ALCS. This packed house trying to rally behind Roger Clemens. Nixon into right center field. Did he get enough? Yes, he did. The Red Sox strike first. Now it's Johnny Damon with an RBI chance. To the left side for Enrique Wilson. His throw sails into the seats. Wilson in the lineup for his bat against Pedro Martinez. Boone is sitting out. Millar hits one to left field. Up and out. The top hitting team in baseball this season, and they're finally showing it. Outside of Mariano Rivera, there are question marks throughout that bullpen. Here comes Joe Torre, and that is it for Roger Clemens. For the first time in his big league career, Mike Messina is coming out of the bullpen. That's what's happened this postseason, an 0-3 record. He's lost twice in this ALCS. And he will try to stop this inning right here. It's 4-0 Boston, a chance for more. First and third, and nobody out. A big strikeout by the Yankee right-hander. One away. To the shortstop, Jeter. Steps and fires. Mike Messina may have just kept the Yankees in this game. Two on with one out, and Ortiz strikes out. Two away. Jeter to his left, gets it, thought about flipping it for the out, but goes across the field. Well, the base is empty. Here's Giambi. As a member of the Oakland A's, the last time Giambi hit this low in the order. As this ball is hit high and deep to right center, off the bat of Giambi and gone. It's a three-run game. 
Giambi batting in the seven spot goes deep and the Yankees are on the board in game seven. First. Nixon went one away. Two hops to Soriano. What a job Messina's done so far for the Yankees out of the bullpen. Into right center field. Damon back at the track, at the wall. It is gone for another Giambi home run. It's 4 2 in the seventh. Runners at first and second, 4-2 Boston, bottom of the seventh. Rivera getting loose for the Yankees in their pen. For the fourth time tonight, Soriano has struck. Two starts, two wins for Wells as Ortiz gets into one to right. This one is at the wall and gone. David Ortiz greets David Wells with a first pitch home run to right. It's 5-2. A hanging curveball right around the belly button. Jeter flies into right. Nixon back. On the run, it's over his head. Jeter will dig for second. And hold there with a double. The 2-2. Two -two. In the center field. Damon will play it on a hop. Jeter will come to the plate. It's a two-run game. With 115 pitches on the night, Brady Little is going to stick with his starter. Lift into the right field corner fair. Bernie Williams will dig. It's a ground rule double. It's second and third. As the Red Sox catch a break as that ball hops out of play. Flair in the center field. Out is Walker, won't get it. The base running of Matsui. He comes home. Nobody covers second. Tie game. is loaded. Aaron Boone stays in, plays third base. Now here's Mariano Rivera, who in the postseason has thrown nine innings, given up one run, three hits. Now we're tied at five. Now the 1-1. One -one. Hit on the ground towards second. Soriano Field snaps the throw to first, one away. With one out, top of the night, tied at five. Rivera deal swung on and chopped the third. Wilson, or rather Boone, goes to first in time. Two out pitch, swung on and blooped to Soriano, who makes the catch on the outfield grass. Here's the one two. Strike three is called. It takes McClellan a long time. The pitch hit on the ground a second. Soriano fields, throws to first two way. It'll be a 1 1. Rivera deal. Swung on. Popped him up in the infield. Jeter taking charge. Jeter near third. Makes a catch. End of inning. Now the 2 2. Call strike three. First out of the top of the 11th. And a swing and a slow number to second base. Picked up by Soriano. Has time. And throws out Miller. That's the second out of the inning. 
One and two, two out, top of the eleventh, tied at five. Here's the pitch from Mo. Swing, Adamant struck him out. Strikes out two of the three hitters he faces in the eleventh. Nothing across for the Red Sox as we head to the bottom of the eleventh. Game seven. Now we're tied at five as we go to the bottom of the eleventh. Here's Aaron Boone to lead off. His first at bat of the game. There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to the World Series. Aaron Boone has hit a home run. The Yankees go to the World Series for the 39th time in their remarkable history. Aaron Boone down the left field line. Yankees win. The Bye. Yankees win. Aaron Boone's first at bat in this game. In the eighth inning, leading by three as Boone hits it to deep left. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. Boone to hero in game seven. <laughs> like that 3-1 slider to Sheffield. Max Sui sticks the bat out into left. Base hit. The Yankees strike first. What a beautiful piece of hitting by Matsui. One to nothing, New York. Anytime you have an injury, such as maybe as uh, minute as an ankle, you want to make sure that you still have the same delivery. I'm not quite sure how, how much Kurt pushes off, but here's a good split, a great split, down and away, in the dirt, clearly a ball. And Matsui, great hitting. Hit that ball with one hand to give the Yankees the lead. Matsui continues to kill the Red Sox. A little further to drop in. It goes as an RBI double. Back to back singles, a walk. And here is Matsui. Down the right field line, hooked into the corner and off the wall. One run scores. Here comes A Rod. Sheffield all the way around. It's a three run double. Luis Soho, a nice play at third base by sending Sheffield with nobody out. Ball off the wall, the slip right there. Jeter Rodriguez score easily. Sheffield in the bottom of your screen being waved home by Luis Soho. Bedlam here in the Bronx. And Sheffield fired up in this game one against Boston. That was a backdoor cutter that Schilling missed by two feet. But like Matsui didn't. Hard hit, another base hit for Matsui. Here comes Sheffield. They'll hold Matsui. You're coming inside. You don't want it right there. Ortiz hits it in the air to left center field. Back at the track, at the wall. It's off the wall. Two runs are going to score. Ortiz stopped running, but he's still going to make it to third, and it's a one-run game. With Rivera standing and watching in the bullpen, Ortiz goes deep to left center off Gordon. And Ortiz came within a matter of feet of making this comeback complete and getting it out of here for an 8-8 score. Joe Torre, over the last nine years, has made a ton of proper moves for the New York Yankees, but this is not one of them. Tying run 90 feet away. It's 8 7. We're in the eighth of game one. Millar pops it up. Cheater. And the Yankees are hanging on by a thread. Two losses to the Red Sox. Nixon leaves it off against Rivera. Goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Peter hauls in out number one. Miller grounds back to Rivera. The second one on the first. Game over. Yankees win game one, 10 7.
The 31st postseason save for Mariano Rivera, the end of his long day, which started in Panama. Flying nearly five hours to get here, arrived in the third inning. Who knew? Back in the sixth inning, when the Yankees had made it eight to nothing, that they would call on Rivera for a four out save tonight. That's into right field, well hit back at the wall. Olroot has gone deep, and it's three nothing. Up over 100 pitches. Damon, 20 home runs during the regular season. Takes strike three. Ground ball to first. An easy play for Olrud. One down. No way you're going to hit that ball fair. That 0 2 pitch. No chance. Game over. After year, game after game, it becomes more and more obvious who the most valuable player is for these Yankees. Way down the line is Matsui, hits it to deep right field. Back is Nixon at the wall. This ball is gone. Home run, Matsui, and it's 3 0 Yankees in the first. A walk, a double, a long fly out, and now a home run. Took it all in and had fun, and that's going to tie this game. A blast out on to Lansdowne Street off the bat of Rodriguez, who's two for two, and it's 4 4 in the third. Not all breaking balls that are up are hangers, but folks, this is a major league hanging breaking ball, but not for long to A Rod. <laughs> Hit a ton over the monster. Not going as Matsui hits it into the right field corner. Nixon will dig the ball out, and Sheffield will hold it third. It's second and third with nobody out. Another extra base hit for Matsui, and the Yankees are coming right back. Two on, one out, 1-0 -oh pitch. Driven in the air to left field. That ball is up and out. Three-run home run for Sheffield. And the Yankees are back on top. It's 9-6. So whoever Terry Francona points to and brings onto that mound for the Red Sox tonight, it isn't working. From Arroyo to Mendoza and now Les Canning. Falling behind in the count and a letter high looked like a slider something away a hanger man this ball is crushed a 9 6 New York lead thanks to this from Gary Sheffield here's a 1 1 Matsui hits it down the left field line that ball is going to fall in for a hit. Matsui will dig into second, and the Red Sox cannot figure out Hideki Matsui. A pair of doubles and a two-run homer. First and third, two out. Matsui grounds one up the middle. Another hit for Matsui, and Sheffield will end up at third as Rodriguez comes home to score. And he 
He hasn't slowed down since. That's into right center field. Well hit. Back is Nixon at the wall. Another home run for Matsui. An unbelievable display by the three and four hitters for the Yankees. Matsui with a pair of home runs, a pair of doubles, plus an RBI single. And you cannot get any hotter than Sheffield and Matsui. What a combination against this Red Sox pitcher. He does it well, of course, but it's not as good as him throwing his cutter on the outer half and letting it ride. A pinch runner, Dave Roberts, is going to come in for Boston. He can run. Picked up from the Dodgers. Miller still waiting for his first pitch. Roberts is going. Posada's throw. Roberts, safe. Roberts had a great jump. It was a good ball for Posada to throw on. Good call. Roberts was 38 for 41 in stolen bases. Nearly perfect. Now Miller will try to get him at least over to third base. Up the middle. Roberts will come to the plate. The throw by Williams. Bill Miller has tied it. Ortiz in the deep right field. Back is Sheffield. We'll see you later tonight. two-minute game and worth every second of it for the Boston Red Sox. Four huge outs picked up by Les Canick. A leadoff hit by Ramirez and David Ortiz sends everybody home just over five hours after it began. The Yankees had been pitching him inside all night. He finally connected a guy who won the division series against the Anaheim Angels wins this game here tonight. He took that one the opposite way over the Green Monster, and this one, he pulled to right. And this ALCS will live on for game five later tonight. Ortiz hits it to deep left field. Back at the Monster and gone. It's a one-run game. dynamic clutch hitter this guy has been for the last two years for the Boston Red Sox. Just absolutely sensational. Hitting 500 in this postseason. Every hit he gets is a big one. Fastball out over the plate. Goff to left. Ortiz fights it off center field. Damon run into the plate, and he can keep on running to New York. Game six tomorrow night. The story with Schilling. 
the ruptured sheath around the peroneal tendon in his right ankle. A lot of talk about him wearing high tops and they found the right type shoes for Schilling to pitch with and the story is he's not pitching with him as Al showed us out in the bullpen and the question is is that the Marcane itself that they're shooting into that ankle or blood from the shots but like a scene from the natural Schilling climbs the mound and prepares to take on this Yankee lineup reaching for it a pop up and Millar hauls it in a perfect first inning he'll do one better into right field back the wall is a wing gonna hold it up at the wall to end the inning a 2 2 now Sierra strikes out and that's the first strikeout of the night for Kurt Schilling pops up shallow center field and now Damon will go get it Fly ball, twisting away from Matsui. He's on the run. It's over his head, and that ball up against the wall. It strikes the fence. Two runs will score, and now they're going to call it a home run. Let's see. Bellhorn is waiting. He's there. Francona's is coming out. He wants it to be ruled a home run. Right now, it's a two-run double, and the Red Sox have a three-to-nothing lead. But Francona wants that fourth run. I thought the ball was out. I thought it hit off a fan's hand. It looked like a fan like pushed it back into the ballpark. They're over the head of Matsui. That ball hits off the hands of the man in the black coat there. Well, this is why there are two extra umpires in postseason play for calls just like this. Clearly, that's over the fence. The fan reached out. But the ball was already over the wall. Usually what the umpires will do is get together. And that's what they're going to do right now. And they're going to send Bellhorn home. That's over the fence. That should be a home run. And if it is, it's a three-run homer. And the Red Sox will lead four to nothing, which should be the proper call. Now the umpire's huddling. This happens more at Yankee Stadium than any other ballpark. There are actually two walls out there in left field. Is it? There's the first wall sitting there on the field, and there's a second wall that those fans, as you can see there, are actually sitting behind. What the kid's name? Jeffrey Mayer. Jeffrey Mayer was the youngster's name. That's right. Very well, famous play. Well, we're going to get to know that fan's name, but they don't get this right. They got it right. Give them credit. And indeed, they're going to send Bell Horn home. Here he comes. We talked about how overdue he was, and he just belted a three-run homer to make it four to nothing, Boston. It's baseball. Matsui pops it up. Millar will have to drift with it. Now in foul territory for out number one. Right side, Millar knocks it down. It's Schilling having to get over and cover with that bad ankle. Two out. To the right side. Schilling again has to at least go into the area. And Millar gets him off the hook. Another 2-2. Two -two. Sierra strikes out. Schilling is at 94 miles per hour on that fastball. Ball one strike. Cairo grounds to the left side. Cabrera called into action in a perfect fifth inning for Kurt Schilling. Doing his thing. Sixth inning now. Game six to do it. He jams Sheffield. Ramirez went back, comes on, and Kurt Schilling rolls through six innings. A feeble swing by Sierra. He strikes out for the third time, and game six goes to the eighth. Runners go. Red Sox force game seven. A tremendous pitching performance by Schilling, Arroyo, and Keith Folk, who does it again.
That'll make it interesting. And why wouldn't this rematch of last year's ALCS last seven games? And here's Ortiz. He rips one into right field. Back at the wall, 2-0 Red Sox. You talk about picking up your ball club after losing a runner at the plate. Ortiz has done that all year, all October, and he goes deep to put Boston out in front. Mount Everest strikes again. He is unbelievable. Here's a guy who was ready to let the world know how disappointed and upset he was that he had fallen into the bullpen in October for the Red Sox and he gets the ball in game seven at Yankee Stadium. His 3-2 to Sheffield. Got him looking. Trying to do the same. Damon hits it in the air to right field. Sheffield back in the corner at the wall. A grand slam. Johnny Damon. Quiet all series goes deep. Four more runs and it's 6-0. it out of here. Vasquez missed with that pitch, but Damon did. Loft in a swinging punt. Bear attack. And over. This excitement comes in time. Low. Almost panicked. Sheffield hits it hard. What a pickup by Miller. Before the Damon home run. Is it There's another one in the right field. Johnny Damon is going off. Three for three. Six runs batted in. And it's an eight to one Red Sox lead. Absolutely hammered into right. Got it. Grounds to Millar. And another perfect inning put on the board by Derek Lowe. He has stepped up huge for the Red Sox tonight. On the mound, he came on to pitch six hitless innings. As Millar flips to Lowe, two out. Arrow strikes out, and Derek Lowe is through five innings. The importance of this game in their franchise history. Trying to get to the World Series for the first time since 1986. Derek Lowe has been sensational. Absolutely fantastic. He's allowed only one hit and one run. This would be the fifth pennant for the Red Sox since that 1918 season. Here it is. Ground ball to second. Reese, the Boston Red Sox have won the pennant. Spread the news, all right. The Boston Red Sox earned this celebration here at Yankee Stadium with the biggest comeback in postseason baseball history.